Who's your commander? Good luck. Equip? Move to combat. Resolves. Right. Now, before you attack Does me. anyone have an answer? Well played. Good game. Hello, this is Jumbo Commander, and I have part two of the standard rotation buying guide for commander players. Ixalan has just come out. That means we have four sets rotating out of standard, and so there are going to be binders full of these cards entering bulk prices for commander players to steal. So don't don't actually steal them. You should trade for them. Let's get started with Shadows Over Innistrad. The most expensive card out of Shadows Over Innistrad is Nahiri the Harbinger. Coming in at 950, we're really remembering when Nahiri was kind of playable in modern. That's definitely some price memory hanging around. But it's in Boros, it draws cards, it kills things, and it can tutor up a gigantic Eldrazi hidden somewhere in your 100 card deck. It seems like a pretty great toolbox in a set of colors that doesn't really have a lot of options. You know, Boros has always been a little bit underwhelming when it came to Commander. It's diehard fans that play Boros, or people like me that have the OCD that need all the color combinations. But I've tried a deck and really enjoyed Archangel Avacyn. Now, it looks like it's mono white on the front, but this is actually a Boros Commander because when you flip it, you get Avacyn the Purifier, which is a red card, making this a Boros Commander. But let's look at Archangel Avacyn. Three white white for a 4-4 flash flying vigilance eat your heart out Sarah Angel. And there's more. When Archangel Avacyn enters the battlefield, creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn. You know, in Boros, that can be really strong. You are going to be an aggressive color and want to sort of flood the board a little bit. And so having some board wipe assurance is going to be pretty strong. And then when you flip Avacyn, it becomes a huge beater and does a little mini board wipe. Now that could work against your own army strategy, but overall this is a really powerful card. And for dominating standard for so long, dropping down to $4 is a steal for us commander players. Of all the Sorens, I think that this is the best one for Commander. It is a little bit expensive at 4 white black, but the abilities are great. I particularly like the plus one to draw a card and drain all of your opponents. I'm really attracted to cards that drain each opponent at the table. Sometimes I'm playing with four other players, and so you get a lot of value out of this. And the yeah, the minus ability is a little bit lame, and the ultimate is amazing but very hard to get to. So I think that this is a little bit underwhelming, especially because I think Planeswalkers are very vulnerable at a big table, but I do like the draw card and this does replace itself pretty easily. You know, I don't know why I'm talking about Soren's card draw when Tireless Tracker is in this set. Two and a green for a three two, and when a land enters the battlefield, you can investigate. That gives you a clue token that you can pay two and sacrifice to draw a card. So this is kind of like a way better Seer Sundial, because you can store up these clues and then crack them later on in the game to get that card draw you need. And Tireless Tracker grows. This is amazing. I have this going in a lot of different decks, not just land synergy decks, just green decks that need that forward momentum. Because you're going to always be playing lands in Commander, and so Tireless Tracker is a great pickup at $3. The next rotating standard card saw a little bit of play, and in that deck, it was amazing. Cryptolith Rite. You flood the board, and suddenly you have a huge man advantage. Now, Cryptolith Rite coming in at a dollar does a great imitation of a $30 reserved list card, Earthcraft. Now, don't yell at me in the comments, Earthcraft is better. I mean, you can tap your creatures the turn they come into play. That lets you get infinite squirrels with Squirrel Nest. And it does manipulate lands, which means that if you stack a lot of enchantments out on land, you can really generate even more mana. But is it 30 times better? Yeah, I don't know. I think that you guys can find a lot of workarounds and make Cryptolith Rite work really well in your deck. Next up, we have a card that was incredibly popular, had a lot of commander decks built around it, and they tried to use it in standard and still comes in at only a dollar, the Gitrog Monster. I don't have to talk this frog up, he's great, but make sure to pick up a few Splendid Reclamations, they are dirt cheap as well. 
Westvel Abbey is a very powerful land. Coming in at only $3, you have a land that can transform into Ormondal Profane Prince. Now, having huge threats on an untapped land is going to be really powerful. But remember, this can't fit in any old deck because the backside is black. It has a black color identity and can only go in decks that have black in them. Okay. But I got to say, Ormenthal is a fantastic beater. Flying, lifelink, indestructible, haste. Really, really cool card. And of course, there are a slew of cards coming in at under a dollar. Sin Prodder. Now, people talk trash about this card, but I think it's really great. You should try it out in your red deck. It'll give you some card advantage. It'll give you a political edge. I think it's really cool. Second Harvest is very cheap, and people were hyped about this to begin with. We just need some more Second Harvest. Maybe some treasure tokens, some clues. Just let's make all the tokens and double them up. Ulvenvald Hydra tutors any land and can get huge because we know we want to ramp in green. Bygone Bishop is not as powerful as its cousin, Tireless Tracker, but it does a cool imitation of Mentor of the Meek. I always love being able to have that card draw on the battlefield and invest it when you have the spare mana to spend. It really makes your turns more efficient. Duskwatch Recruiter is a pretty expensive uncommon, and I remember when it was even higher, but this activated ability, it doesn't require any tapping. If you have a deck that can produce a lot of mana, you can just mill through your whole deck. In fact, if you have an infinite mana outlet, then Duskwatch Recruiter can find the exact combo piece you need. It's a very cool card for Commander. Audric Lunark Marshall can make your team full of keywords, and it's just a very fun card. Now I have to talk seriously with you. If you're going to buy one card from all of these, please buy Seasons Past. It's six mana, and the recursion value on this is insane. You can often get three, four, five cards back from your graveyard into your hand. You don't understand. Let me counsel you, because I have witnessed a new renaissance in value. It's impossible to grapple with the force that is Seasons Past, and honestly, it's hard to recollect any card in the past that's better than it, and I can't in my wildest dreams think of any recursion spell I'd rather cast. Lastly, we have an awesome tribal commander slipping in at well under a dollar. This mythic Sigarda Heron's Grace goes really well with humans, and let me remind you that all of these cards are under a dollar and fit great in different commander strategies. Now I'm going to put a similar disclaimer on this video that I did my last one. This is not a guide to make money. There are so many of these cards out there, and many of them are not seeing play in formats that really hike the price up. These are just great commander cards at really low prices. Let's move on to Eldritch Moon, where the standout card for commander in the set has got to be the big lady herself, Emrakul the Promised End. This is a 13 mana, Legendary Eldrazi, 13-13, and it has a really interesting ability allowing you to take control of an opponent's turn, and this crazy Eldrazi is coming in at only $7. That is a very low price for such an iconic creature and a powerful, fun ability. Emrakul took a huge hit when it was banned out of standard for being awesome, basically but we can pick it up and enjoy playing with it for this low, low price. And another set of really iconic cards that are just going to be so much fun to play with and very hard to reprint will be the meld cards. Handwear, the Writhing Township, and Brisella Voice of Nightmares. And this is a discount price here. $1.25 for the Handwear and $6 for Brisella. These are cool, iconic cards, and they're really valuable. Hanwar Battlements is just a good card. Uh, it comes into play untapped, taps for colorless, and red tap, target creature gains haste until end of turn. I know that that's an extra tax, and maybe Slayer's Stronghold might be something you want more. No. The Bandit home, home of the Bandit, Bandit, ugh. Hall of the Bandit Lord. That wasn't very smooth, was it? I don't care. I'm rolling with it. So Handwear Battlements does tax you to give haste. It actually taxes you two mana because you got to tap the battlements as well. 
So Hall of the Bandit Lord will always be your go-to for real powerful haste. Think playing your commander just on curve with haste, but Hanwar Battlements can really put something straight into your opponent's face later on in the game. Not to mention the crazy thing it transforms into. I have to say that these melds are really cool. Brissella over there, 910, Flying, First Strike, Vigilance, Lifelink. Opponents can't cast spells with converted mana cost, three or less. These are the big over-the-top plays that make Commander so much fun. Next up, we had a card that used to be expensive and then just dropped. Ishkana Graft Widow. I remember when these were pretty pricey and a really great strategy in the Delirium builds. And now, the poor spider's just a dollar. But this is the only legendary spider out there. So if you want a spider spawning deck or Arachnogenesis, you love that card and you want to really go all in, then Ishkana's got to be the way to go. Wizards is always printing new spiders, so the next time they come out with a really great spider, you're going to be glad you have an Ishkana sitting in your binder somewhere. Briefly, I gotta mention the Value Lands Gyre Reach Sanitarium. It's a loot land, it's 50 cents, just buy it. Thalia Heretic Cathar is a legendary creature, but not the best commander, but an excellent hate bear. Creatures and non-basic lands your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped. Uh, there is no better feeling than playing against someone else's toon deck and watching them play a tapped fetch land and cracking it into a tapped dual land. Ugh, feels so good. My $1.25 soldier just countered your $500 mana base. Next, I have to mention Tamiyo because anytime a planeswalker is this cheap, Tamiyo's $350. Man, you gotta pay attention. And I'm not a huge fan of Planeswalkers in Commander. I think that they're really vulnerable and subject to a lot of attacks. But Tamiyo has a very awesome ultimate. You draw three cards, and then you get an emblem that says you may cast non-land cards from your hand without paying their mana cost. It's an Ancestral Omniscience. It's amazing. And so if you have a doubling season, I'd build a deck around just those two cards. It's so great. Uh, the plus one ability is pretty cool, being able to replace Tamiyo. Its minus ability is definitely focused on a 1v1 strategy, and it is difficult to cast, but dude, th 350, and in the colors of a Traxa, what? Okay. Next up, we have a card that has done nothing in any other format, but is amazing in Commander. It's Mind's Dilation, and Mind's Dilation is sitting at $1.50. First off, you should buy this card. It's great. It hasn't really gone up or down very much because only Commander players are interested in it. But I want to look at this and find out what competing forces are at play which cause a card like this to be $1.50. First off, it's a mythic in high demand for something like Commander, so you'd think it should be expensive. But then what brings it down maybe is, well, Commander doesn't drive prices. Or maybe what's bringing it down is the number of cards that were opened from this set. It's very interesting to remove the confounding variables that are modern and standard play and see just what Commander does to a card. Now let's look at a card that was definitely impacted by modern, Eldric Evolution. It was so high as people were imagining it to be the next birthing pod, and oh how far it has dropped down to a dollar. Speaking of birthing pod, you should probably just buy a birthing pod. It's seven bucks, and honestly, I think it's seven times better than Eldritch Revolution. And if that's not your thing, maybe a natural order. That's sitting at around $12 for the newest version, and it might also be 12 times better than Eldritch Evolution. Rounding out the last of the cards here, we have some cards that did some interesting things. Thalia's Lancers was cheap, and then the legendary rule changed so it could fetch Planeswalkers, and then it went up a little bit. But it's still like a bulk rare, so it like climbed up to 50 cents. Ooh, nice. A Tree of Perdition is a fan favorite, and it's been all over the place. It never really plateaued, it just kind of went up and down and around. And I think that 350 might not be the bottom, but you might just want to buy it because it's got this weird popularity to it. I wouldn't trust this card. 
and Anguished Unmaking also did a little bit of a dip and a recover, so it hasn't really plateaued, but I don't think it's ever going to be truly bulk. I think it's always going to be a little bit above a dollar, so you might want to pick them up because it's a really good card in our format. Let's talk about some of the bulk we can buy in this set. Imprisoned in the Moon, costing pennies, dosing up perfection. Sigarda's Aid. Sigarda's Aid belongs in every equipment deck. Just pick one up. Mirrorwing Dragon does not belong in every deck, but it's so unique and so inexpensive for a really awesome mythic dragon. Just pick one of those up too. And Decimator of Provinces does a very poor imitation of Craterhoof Behemoth, but it still does one and it's under a dollar for a mythic out of this set. And it can be fetched with From Beyond. So From Beyond can pump out a bunch of little Eldrazi's and then later on fetch up a Decimator of Provinces to win the game with. I have one last piece of advice. Remember, this set was full of zombies, vampires, and werewolves. These are awesome tribes. All of them are coming back. And so if you can pick up some discount cards for your favorite tribe, go ahead and do it. And I know that Ulrich of the Krullen Horde was not your legendary werewolf. It just wasn't a good legendary werewolf. But when they finally do print your legendary werewolf, don't you want Ulrich in that deck? Wouldn't you want a foil copy? Because here's what's going to happen. Right now, he's dirt cheap because everyone hates him. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, oh, Rich, but it's true. Everyone hates you. But as soon as the big, bad, awesome werewolf commander comes out, uh, Ulrich is going to go up as well. So go buy a copy now for that future werewolf deck down the road. My name is Jumbo Commander, and I make tons of Commander content. If you like this video and want to see more stuff like it, hit that subscribe button, go ahead and like this video, and I'm really excited because coming up later on this week is going to be another Commander deck tech. Oh, so much good stuff going on. I'll see you guys real soon.